Okay, as you can see, we're joined by John Fitzpatrick. Let's go to straight to questions. We'll start with Chip Towers and then Anthony Dasher. Yeah, John, obviously we're not getting to see a whole lot of practice these, these days. Uh, can you just give us an idea of what today was like? Uh, you guys uh, in full pads again, and, and what's, the, uh, what's the offense looking like in your opinion? Uh, today went really well. Um, the offense was connecting um, in the pass game and the run game. Uh, it was a real physical practice, second day of full pads. Um, but I think we put together a good practice. Um, from each position group, we're working hard, uh, covering down, doing, doing those extra things. So I'm really excited about uh, the way the offense looks right now. Hey, John, good to see you. Uh, last week, Coach Smart uh, was speaking about how, of course, y'all didn't have spring last year. I mean, uh, that, that, how the offense right now, you know, this early on is really – ahead of where y'all were like maybe in July when y'all were preparing last year. Can you kind of give some examples of that, of how, how, why, of how the offense is kind of ahead of, has a schedule maybe right now? I think because we're returning a bunch of uh, great players and we also have a, a bunch of um, committed freshmen that are eager and excited to learn. Um, so when you combine those two, um, you know, the opportunities are endless and we're really excited about them. Let's go to Seth Emerson and then Mike Griffith. John, uh, I guess in that vein, how much do you think is – how much is your sense is being – I don't know if added to the playbook is the right term for it, but what more do you think is going on in Coach Munkin's second year, especially when you have a little bit of a more of a normal spring? You're saying like what's being added? Yeah, or is anything being added or is it like just – fixing stuff from last year or, or what does it look like? I think it's a good combination of both. Um, but I think the spring primarily focus on, focuses on um, getting better as football players. And that's just playing football, going out in there and hitting each other um, and going out in there, run fast, um, running your routes. So, you know, it's nothing crazy. But, uh, yeah, it's more about just getting out there and, you know, playing football. John, we've heard Coach Smart talk about quarterbacks thrown to the receivers a lot. Obviously, you, you would be a part of those type of workouts. Can you share some insights into just how much extra work is going on and how many guys are out there with four quarterbacks and, I don't know, probably, what, 15 or 16 targets between the receivers and the tight ends maybe? Uh, it's really exciting having a bunch of talent at quarterback and then seeing um, from the tight end room the talent that we have and then the receiver room. And, uh, you know, it started, you know, right after the bowl game. We wanted to use that as a springboard uh, going into the spring and then following up into the summer and then the coming season. Um, you know, but we w wanted to start early and um, start getting routes in, start seven on seven, stuff like that. Um, and I think we did a great job and um, it's kind of showing up on the field as we go throughout spring practice. Let's go to Dean and then Jake. Dean, we can't hear you, buddy. No, you're on mute again. Okay, Jake, go ahead. Yeah, uh, John, uh, you mentioned the talented quarterback. Um, can you give us a scouting report on on Brock Vandegrift? I don't. None of us have had a chance to really see him um, at Georgia yet. What What do you think of him, and, and what does he kind of bring to the table? Brock's a great kid. Um, he He joins a talented group. Um, from top to bottom, they're all talented. So he, he's another great kid that we're excited to have aboard. Dean, you want to try? Go ahead. I can try. There you are. We got you. You said the offense was really connecting. That that's, seems to me like you're saying that the this is in passing game. Is, is that what you mean to say? Is And how many quarterbacks are connecting with receivers? Uh, connecting both in the run game and in the pass game. And – all quarterbacks are doing doing a great job so far. All right, let's go to Mark and then uh, Matthew. John, what's different when you have a a quarterback that's you know started the last four games of the year? You have running backs that that obviously are preseason. Same thing with wide receivers. You know, some uh, guys that gone from the offensive line, but but 
a lot of guys back on offense. How, how does that translate on the practice field this spring? Um, I'd say it translates. We're just excited and we're we're eager and we're hungry. Um, we we all have a bunch of experience. I feel like, and we just want to use that experience. And you know, we we don't want to be you know sitting there watching when it comes to January. We want to we, we want to be playing in those games. So, thank you. Hey, John. Um, so obviously you're coming off a good good game to finish the last year at the Peach Bowl. What, if anything, are you really focusing on to improve in your game this year? And what do you hope to get out of this spring? Um, I want to keep working on my my route tree, um, expand it more, fine tune that tops of routes in and out of my breaks and that thing. And then also in the run game, you can never be, you know, 100 percent. So just the finer things such as footwork, thing, things of that nature. Go to Palmer and then Connor. Yeah, Jake asked you about Brock Vandergriff. Wanted to ask you about Brock Bowers. What What have your first impressions of him been so far this spring? Brock's another great kid. Um, we're really excited to have him aboard. Uh, he's smart and he, he he's a good player, and he joins a, a great group of tight ends, um, along with Brett Goody, Darnell, you name it. So I'm excited to have him. Hey, John, I wanted to ask you about Darnell. How much further along is he now compared to where he was when he arrived last summer? Darnell's done a great job. Um, I think he's, he's uh, you know, focused more and then taken a better hold of the playbook. Um, so he's going to continue to do that, and he's going to continue to lead and, and perform like we want him to perform. All right, McGregor, we got time for one more question. Let's go to you, buddy. Hey, John, I was just wondering with the, the tight end squad and during spring practice, I was wondering what is your main focus as a group been on in the recent practices? Um, there's a lot of focus. Uh, the, probably the main focus is um, the effort. You know, you can run all the routes that you want and run a great route. But if it gets thrown to the other side of the field, are you going to be the one to cover cover down and follow that ball? Or are you going to be the one to, um, you know, stop just to, you know, save your breath for the next play? Things like that. John, thank you for your time. Have a good rest of your evening. Thank you, too. Thank you. Okay, we're joined now by Channing Tindall. Let's go to Mike Griffith and then Mark Weiser. Uh, hey, Channing. Uh, obviously, big big shoes to fill uh, with with Monty Rice gone. Can you just talk about the the Mike position and the challenge that Georgia has uh, ahead, and what what are some of the important parts of playing that position? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it is uh, Monty was a big piece of the puzzle, or not, but like uh, in the linebacker room, I feel like Coach Schumann has trained all of us, no matter who it is in the position, in order to get their job done and whatnot. So we just have to buckle down, like really look at technique fundamentals, and just have at it. Channing, I'm curious uh, whether you played catch up with Will Muschamp when he joined the staff. I know he probably wanted to keep you home. Uh, did you guys uh, talk a little bit about that and what's it like to have him on the practice field now? When I didn't even know Coach Muschamp, when the first day Coach Muschamp was here, I was watching some extra film with my coach or whatnot. It was like, there's a surprise upstairs or whatnot. So I look up and when I see Coach, I was like, wait. <laughs> what, like, what are you doing here? So we had a nice little conversation. It's good to have someone from our hometown here and whatnot, too. So, like, with Coach Smart and Coach Most Champ, I feel like I have a piece of home here as well. As well with, like, Jordan Davis, who are not from North Carolina, and Zamir, who are not. So that it's just a uh, piece to the puzzle. It really makes me feel more comfortable. I was already comfortable, but, you know. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Let's go to Chip and then Dasher. Mm -hmm. Hey Channing, I don't I don't know if Amir is sitting there waiting in the wings, but uh, you know he's a guy that you know we don't know that much about. That's uh, despite being an upperclassman at this point, you know he's been on the field a lot of special teams. But 
what can you tell us about uh, Amir? You know, what, can, what kind of guy is he? Uh, what kind of teammate? And uh, I guess most importantly, what kind of cornerback is he going to be? Uh, I want to say, like, just within practice or whatnot, we, we uh, go slowly from step to step to step to step. And so while we've been in practice or whatnot, everybody, I haven't looked, specifically looked at one player or whatnot, like, as, just as a team, I feel like we've all just been getting better or whatnot through the aspects of learning the fundamentals, learning the playbook, just getting downhill or whatnot. We're still pretty, uh, we're young right now, but I feel like within, like, that's nothing we need to worry about at the moment. Hey, Channing, good to see you. Got another Coach Muschamp question for you. Uh, I just wonder if there's any, when you see him and uh, Coach Smart kind of interact and kind of, you know, do their things, any kind of, and it kind of jumps out at you. Is it like brothers kind of, kind of deal? Is it old friends? Kind of what, what kind of, what I like on the field, I guess, is what I'm asking. Uh, they definitely have the same tendencies. When I know if you ever see Coach Smart with the visor or not, Coach Meschan does the same thing with the visor. Like you said, it's really <laughs> brotherly love. You can definitely tell they were best friends. They are best friends with not yeah. while you're on the field. But uh, even the advice they give is kind of similar, like just the way they say it. Like, uh -huh. kind of everything about them is they like two peas in the pod, honestly. It's like as soon as I see Coach Smart, I see Coach Meschan. Like, it's <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Let's go to uh, Palmer and then Dean. Yeah, Channing, with uh, with Nicobe Dean out for the spring, um, has that opened up any opportunities for, for you to maybe play some different inside linebacker positions? And, and who's stepping up uh, maybe as a vocal leader in the group in his absence? Uh, I would say right now, one thing I learned as soon as I got to college, as soon as I got here, there are no true starters ever. So, like, week to week, even practice to practice, like, whoever's doing good in practice, that's who's going to rise above, uh, above er everything. Like, it just, it really just depends on how you're doing in practice, how you're, uh, how you're uh, executing plays or what. Nah, it's just play it day by day. I just say it like that. There's truly no, like, okay, like, we favor this guy, this guy. It's, everything is recorded. Everything is looked at. Whatever you do, do it with a purpose. Channing, along those same lines, does that create pressure, competition? Um, describe what it's like in a practice when you don't know what the sort of set roles are for guys in terms of starters, backups, et cetera. Uh, I feel like it can create pressure, but like with the specifically an in inside linebacker room, I don't feel like it's more family oriented. So like with young younger guys like Smile or transfers like John Staten that just came in or whatnot, they'll come in, we'll talk to them or whatnot. We love to see anybody do good on the field or whatnot. So we tap them on the head. If they mess up or anything, we'll talk to them. Even with me, like I'm still still learning to this day, like just little fundamentals or whatnot. So like just, it's really family oriented or whatnot. So we just push each other. So like if we see someone mess up on a play or we'll tell them, shoot them ahead, the you got to get it next time or anything like that. Like it's not really... It is competition, but it doesn't feel like competition. We just all trying to get better at the end of the day. Let's go to Seth and then Jake. Channing, uh, there's a lot of guys on defense that have kind of waited their turn to play, and, and they're getting that chance now, whether it's Christopher Smith last year, Latavius, uh, Brittany, um, you know, it, even, even you, you know, didn't play right away probably as much as you wanted. How much – do you think it helps like to to have patience and do you see it paying off for a lot of people i definitely do see it paying off for a lot of people just staying humble and waiting well you learn any like and when you start looking at it from a different perspective from like i'm not playing to like i'm getting reps and i need to find out what i'm doing wrong and just moving from there you would definitely see like the improvement of anybody from that, that point i feel like georgia and just as a whole, Coach Smart has taught taught us that lesson. And, and I, the way we look at things are more so much more advanced, if that makes sense. Channing, uh, you know, I, I look at guys like you and Adam Anderson. You guys were on the field as freshmen, kind of in a specialty type role. But it's it's always been a role and not necessarily, you know, the starter or, or a member of the rotation for a whole year. That's kind of rare now that guys stick around for four years and, and kind of, you know, bide their time like that. 
what's kind of gone in that, that for you? Have there been ups and downs or, or, you know, is, is it a situation where you've known this is where you're supposed to be the whole time? Uh, I've definitely, I've had, I feel like I've had my frustrations or whatnot, but I feel at the end of the day or whatnot, I knew like this was the place for me and I knew it was going to take me some time coming from high school, not playing inside linebacker as much to coming here. I knew it was going to take me some time to actually gather and learn it. So if that was playing a role, I was just trying to do whatever, whatever was best for the team at the moment. And so like just keep pushing forward. And I knew like slowly and sure, but surely I was going to get it. And I feel like I'm getting it more now than ever and just keep pushing forward from there. So it's not a fact for like just, I'm not looking at it from just like, I'm playing a certain role for the team. I'm doing anything that can help the team out in any sort of way possible. Like I'm looking at it from like the whole team is my family. So why wouldn't I do anything in my power to help them? Let's go to McGregor and then Matthew. Hi, I was just wondering, you, you mentioned uh, transfer John State, and I was just wondering, uh, he's been playing college football for a while, and I was wondering, does he bring any, like, valuable experience or knowledge to you and uh, your fellow linebackers? Uh, I feel like everybody brings their own piece uh, to the puzzle in, a, in the linebacker room. Or whatever. We haven't gone too far. Like, we're third day in, fourth day in the spring practice, I'd say, but, like, just with workouts and everything we have, he's definitely pushed me, and I pushed him, and it just feed off each other, just real family-oriented. Yeah, Chaining, you talk about uh, going step by step in practice, taking it slowly. Um, to that point, what is the relationship? What does the communication look like with the secondary uh, that's going to feature maybe some more inexperienced players? What does that look like so early on in practice? Uh, right now, I feel like everyone's doing pretty well. Or not, like I said, like it's still early. Or not, we I focus on what I have to do, and they have to focus on what they have to do. But just watching film or not, I feel like everything's coming together. Last question is from Connor. Hey, Channing. Kirby had really praised the job N'Kobe Dean has done as a leader so far this spring. What does that really look like, especially with him not being a full participant because of injury? Uh, because he's out doesn't mean he's still not uh, helping the team or not. He's still on the sideline. He's coaching. He'll coach me. He'll coach Quaid. It doesn't matter. He's still out there. So just because he's not uh, – active on the field right now doesn't mean he's still not being a leader for the team. So he's still out there helping the coach, uh, doing a good job. We're just like, just ready for him to get back, get healthy. Okay, Channing, thanks for your time. Have a good rest of your night. I yeah, appreciate that. Thank you so much.
Okay, as you can see, we're joined by Amir Speed. Let's go to Dean and then Mike. Amir, uh, you're coming into, you know, a couple seasons into it up here. What's going to make you be an impact player this fall? Um, I say as far as just helping my team out the best way I can and being able to hone in on my technique and just being that that old guy that can, you know, the young, the young players can lean on, ask for help, and just be there when they need me. Yeah, hey, Amir, can you talk a little bit about um, some of the attributes you bring and, and what are the areas you think you've got to work on to win one of those jobs? Um, Attribute-wise, I feel like I bring good good length and good speed to this defense. And also, I feel like I know the scheme very well, so those things can help me out in my game. Let's go to Dash and then Seth. Hey, Amir, good to see you. I mean, you've been here a long time, obviously, now. You just kind of uh, – Talk about what the, the weight has been like, you know, buying your time, you know, competing, waiting for this this time this year, this opportunity this year, I guess I should say, to, to finally have a chance. What has that been like, uh, showing the patience, I guess, that you possibly had to do? Um, well, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to be here. You know, God God's timing is different for everybody else. So I'm just here working, getting better, just waiting for that right moment to, you know, be able to step up and take my role. Amir, on, on that vein, what what is it like, waiting do you do you hear from people back home do you do you debate putting your name in the portal and, and what is it like now having gotten to this point and showed patience and it, it looks like it's paying off um, well, I love my teammates I love I love the University of Georgia um, every pretty much everything that's here that's one of the reasons why I'm still here today so just just realizing you know understanding my situations just knowing that God's time is different for everybody else just kept me real patient and humble throughout my experiences Go to Jed and then Chip. Hi, Amir. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, Coach Muschamp. Just what is he like, you know, working with the defense and, you know, how do he and Coach Smart interact on the field? Um, Coach Muschamp's a really good dude. He's been helping all the young guys out a lot, you know, drilling the scheme into us to make sure that we all know what's going on. Not as far as just football-wise, but just the little stuff, you know, it kind of adds up to help you improve your game, be better at what we do. But he's, he's been a good dude. Him, him and Coach Smart are real cool. And it's, it's good to have them both out there. It's just like, I don't know, is it, both of those two heads together, it's, it helped you out a lot. Yeah, Amir, can, you alluded to this earlier when he was, you were asked about what you bring to the position. You said a lot of, a lot of uh, height and length. That's what's always set you apart. You're a really tall, long guy, yet you've stuck at cornerback all this time. Uh, and as far as I know, you know, hadn't been given looks at outside linebacker or safety. Tell me about playing cornerback at your size, and uh, is that something that you're really kind of motivated to to prove you can do? Because there's nowhere to hide at that position. Yeah, so I'm actually motivated to just show that even though I'm six three, that you know I can I can do the same thing everybody else is doing. But I I, I want to know the whole secondary. I want to be able to do it all. So anything that's secondary, I've been kind of lately drilling in just learning all the positions because I know learning everything else will help me out in my corner position to be able to just be better at my game. Let's go to Jake and then Mark. Amir, um, outside of, I guess it was a wrist injury or, or an arm injury your sophomore year when you redshirted, and then, uh, you know, being behind guys like Eric Stokes and DeAndre Baker and Tyson Campbell, what, what's kind of stood in the way to this point? What's kind of been the obstacle between you and the field? And, and, and do you think that's something you can clear, um, you know, between now and the start of the season? Um, how I see everything, guys, is, you know, everything happens for a reason, you know, I can't, I can't speak with anybody else's blessing. They were there, they took advantage of the opportunities and they did very good at what they did. So I've just been here learning and just waiting for my time. Amir, I know, I know you hope to get on the field uh, more this season. Up to now, what would you say is the most memorable play you've been a part of at Georgia? What's your best memory overall just during your four seasons? <laughs> most memorable play? <sighs> most memorable play. I say I say the Cincinnati game was pretty fun. Being in like on the dime rabbits and the third down calls, it was just pretty fun to be out there with the guys. And then for that last game winning field goal, it was just it was ecstatic. But really being here, it's been a lot of good experience and being part of this team coming from Rose Bowl to national championship. It's just I've seen a lot of good things. So I hope we can do a lot of great things this year too. Let's go to Palmer and then Matthew. Yeah, Amir, you mentioned that Cincinnati game. Uh, you know, how much do you think the playing experience you got in that it, it can, you know, help you this spring and, you know, headed into this fall where you can take on a bigger role? 
Um, I think any playing experience will help. That game definitely allowed me to get my feet wet and, you know, just to get a feel for things. So I feel like those things will be able to carry into the, the spring and also into the fall. Hey, Amir. Um, just want to know, what are some of your initial impressions of Coach Adai? What, what do you think he's going to bring to this defense? And how do you think uh, your experience and his are going to help some of these younger defensive backs? Um, Coach Adai, he's a, he's a real good dude. I, I love his energy. And he's just... He just hones in on the technique and the little things and kind of lets us, helps us master what we do and just how to really be a lead at what we do. So he, he's a really good dude. I think we're going to do really good. We're going to do really good, really well with him. All right, gang, forgive me. I wanted to do this all night. Let's go to Connor and then McGregor. <laughs> hey, Amir, you, you mentioned wanting to help out some of those young guys. How have Keely Ringo and Nylon Green looked so far this camp? Um, they've been doing good. All our young guys are learning. They're getting better day by day focusing on the technique, playbook, just trying to be the best we can be because, you know, we have some gaps to fill all across the secondary, so we're going to need young players to step up. Uh, hey, Amir, I was just wondering, with uh, many previous uh, defensive backs moving on from Georgia, has there have you noticed any significant shifts in leadership at the defensive back position? Um, yes, sir. I know it's always the old guys. There's always been the leaders in the room, but, you know, being here from Baker and Dom and AD and – all those guys and to Tyreek just shift it over and over and over just to see as time go on and seeing myself as well going from young guy to being older, like the leadership, those roles have changed over the years. Amir, thank you for your time and have a good rest of your night. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good night as well. Thank you so much. All right, everybody. Thanks a lot and uh, we'll see you soon.